And so I'm going to um, organize the information I need in the form of a little chart. I will have a column for derivatives. I don't remember if I want two columns or three columns. I'm gonna go with three derivatives. The uh, function is f of x equals e to the x. So maybe I need a column here that's for n. That's what I need, values of n. So I'm going to say when n is 0, n is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. The 0 derivative is just, I'll write that little 0 in, in parentheses, um, it is just the function itself, f of x. So the 0 derivative is e to the x. Then I need to know the 0 derivative at, uh, or the, I, I need a column for the nth derivative at 0. So the 0 derivative is the function e to the x. What's e to the 0? That is 1. Then the second derivative, uh, rather the first derivative is what? e to the x. So f prime at 0 is e to the 0, that's 1. f double prime at x is what? e to the x. So f double prime at 0 is 1. f triple prime at x is e to the x. So the third derivative at 0 is 1. I think I'm ready to write out the McLuhan series for this problem. So, so f of x is e to the x, and my McLuhan series would be the sum as n starts at 0 and goes to infinity. Um, Looking right here, this numerator, in this case, this numerator is always what? 1. So it's going to be 1 over n factorial times x to the n. And I can write out a few terms for this. So f of x. I could write it out. When n is 0, this is 1 over 1 times 1. It is 1. When n is 1, what's my term going to be? x. When n is 2, 1 half x squared. When n is 3, 3 factorial is 6, 1 6 x cubed. When n is 4, 24 factorial is, uh, not 24 factorial, 4 factorial is 24, 1 24th x to the 4th. So there is the McLaurin series for this function e to the x. They have also asked for the radius of convergence and so for that I would need to probably find the interval of convergence and for that I'm going to use the ratio test. Here's my McLaurin series. Here is, this is a sub n for the ratio test. And for the ratio test, I will do, well, let's find this ratio, a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, the absolute value of that. Then I'm going to do the limit as n approaches infinity. So let me label this ratio test. 
Let's see. A sub, well, I'm going to go after A sub n plus 1 first. And that's going to be x. I'm going to write the x in the numerator. x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now it's divided by A sub n. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal would be n factorial over x to the n. Start simplifying this using algebra. So I'm going to get the x's together in a fraction, numerator, denominator, times n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. For the x's, I have the same base. I can just subtract the exponents. What are you going to get? X. How about this fraction with the factorials? 1 over n plus 1. If you're not sure about that, you need to see me about that for an explanation. <coughs> so there's my ratio and the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of x times 1 over n plus 1, that equals what? Zero. That's zero. This is x times zero, because 1 over n plus 1 is going to zero. So I'll write x times zero, which is zero. According to the ratio test, what happens? It converges. This is less than 1. So it converges. The ratio test says converges absolutely, but that also means converges. So the series converges. It doesn't matter what x is. It converges for all x. Because whatever number you put in there for x, that times zero is going to be zero. So it converges for all x. The radius of convergence is infinity. Is that because it converges for all x? Yes. Okay. If I think about a number line, if I decide I want to, say, graph the numbers of x for which this converges, the entire number line would be shaded in. You know, back in the previous section, we were finding, okay, it's centered at zero. That's obvious. It's a McLaurin series. So it either converges only at zero, or it converges for some interval around zero, but since I've found that the limit is zero, regardless of the value of x, that tells me it converges on the entire number line. So that number line represents values of x for which it converges, and it's everywhere. So the radius of convergence is infinity, which just, that's what we say.